So we pretty much about to start the story off with a homegirl being in jail. Hey y'all, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. My name is Janae, if you didn't know, and today's video is another true crime episode. So if you're ready, let's go. So as y'all know, today is the third day of Mystery Week. I see y'all in the comments already trying to figure out what the theme of this week is, putting y'all suggestions and guesses in. I love it, I love it, I love to see it. But y'all already know that I'm not gonna let y'all know which one of y'all is right until the end of the series. So y'all got two more days two three i don't know but yeah y'all just keep the guesses coming let me know what y'all think and i don't i don't think i got nothing else to say like i really don't be having too much to say in the beginning of these videos it don't be a lot of stuff going on in my life so i really don't be having nothing to update y'all alone i haven't been doing my nails because i'm waiting until friday to do my nails because i won't be in town next week so i want to do my nails right before i'm about to leave so with that being said though i do got something to tell y'all since i'm not gonna be here next week I don't think I'm gonna have a video up until not next week Monday but the week after that so I'm gonna be on like a week hiatus so if y'all new here and y'all haven't been watching my videos y'all got about a week to catch up I got a playlist it's called crime and wine y'all go watch it it's a whole lot of videos there y'all can watch y'all can binge watch me until I get back you know so y'all ain't missing out on nothing so y'all see where I came from and see where I'm at and y'all can see how I grew but yeah with all that being said we're gonna go ahead and get into today's video and today we are talking about Melissa Ann Shepherd. and when I tell y'all this lady has no chill she has absolutely no chill I mean that but y'all gonna see what I'm talking about so Melissa was born Melissa Ann Russell on May 16 1935 in New Brunswick Canada and there's not a lot about her childhood about her growing up about her early life so we pretty much about to start the story off with a homegirl being in jail okay yeah it's that kind of story so in 1985 Melissa who went by Millie was serving some time in prison for over 30 counts of fraud and I think at this time she was already married and her husband's name was Russell Shepard. And Russell decided that he was going to stick beside her. And when she got out of jail, the two of them moved from New Brunswick to a different province so that they could start over, get a fresh life. Because, you know, she got a criminal history in New Brunswick now. So she don't want that. So she and Russell moved out of New Brunswick and moved to Prince Edward Island. Now, I don't know if homegirl got bored or what, but after more than 25 years of marriage, she decided that she was going to step out. And in 1989, she met a 42-year-old man named Gordon Stewart. And she was 54 at this time, so she had got herself a young tenderoni. Now, Gordon was actually married previously, but his wife had ended up passing away from cancer a couple years prior to him meeting Melissa. And when he met her, she pretty much did and said all of the things that he wanted to hear. Because, you know, she's a little bit older than him, so she's, you know, pretty much macking him making him feel like she's everything that he needs at this stage in his life. And Gordon, he had a little bit of money because he was retired from the army and he would get a pension. And so he had a nice little chunk of change sitting in the bank. And so when Melissa swooped in, it was nothing for him to fly them out to Las Vegas so that they could get married. Mind y'all, she's still married to Russell, which is probably why they went to Las Vegas. She was probably the one who suggested it because she knew she couldn't get married in Canada because it's illegal. Now, at some point, she would end up getting a divorce from Russell, but I don't know when that happened, but I do know that it wasn't before she married Gordon. Now, Gordon was known to have a drinking problem, but once he married Melissa, it got so much worse. He started having blackout spells, multiple jail visits, multiple hospital visits, and during those hospital stays, they would even find drugs in Gordon's system. So, not only was he now drinking, he was also taking drugs as well so as you can imagine the relationship started going downhill because of this they had money problems now Gordon's drinking problem and on top of that his drug problem like it just was not looking good for this couple but they decided that they wanted to give it a try and they and they figured that moving away from the town that they was in to a new place they would they would kind of just, you know, get a fresh start. But that did not ring to be true. So it's 1991 and Melissa and Gordon are now in their new town and they decide to go. I don't know if they were trying to go on a day trip or if they was just going on a ride. I don't know. But whatever the case was, Melissa would end up at a police station reporting that she had been, um, I don't think YouTube liked this word, raped. And while she was making this report, she kind of just slipped in there that she accidentally killed her attacker. 
And I'm really feeling like you should have led with that, but neither here nor there. So according to Melissa, she said that she had been attacked and somehow she was able to escape. So she hopped in her car and put that thing in reverse, but that's not what she was trying to do. So when she put it in gear and hit the gas, she went backwards and apparently her attacker was behind the car. And in a panic, she, you know, she didn't try to go backwards. So she shot that thing in drive and went forward. And as she was going forward, she ran over her attacker for a second time. And that's when she fled and drove to the police station. And I bet y'all can guess who her alleged attacker was. Yes, her illegal husband, Gordon. Now, when Gordon's toxicology reports came back, it was stated that he had lethal levels of tranquilizers. I think it was benzodiazepines or terazepam or something like that, and alcohol in his system. So he was highly, highly inebriated to the point where if he hadn't been run over with the car, he was probably going to die anyways. So now because of all of this, Melissa was charged with manslaughter and she was sentenced to six years in prison, but she would only end up serving two before she was released in 1994. And after she got out of jail, she kind of did like a little media tour about domestic violence and kind of somewhat became an advocate or a spokesperson for survivors of domestic violence. But eventually she would end up deciding that she needed a fresh start and Melissa and these fresh starts, like, why you keep trying to start over, girl? Can't you see the trouble follows you? But anyways, so she went to Florida for her fresh start. And while she was in church, she met a man named Robert Frederick. And Robert was an older man. He was in his early 80s. And I think from what I read, I think she might have met him online when she was in Canada. And that's the reason she came down. I'm not 100% sure about that, though. But I do think she met him online and that's why she went to Florida for her fresh start to restart with Robert and then she met him at a church. But however the situation went, they was engaged three days after meeting and a month after that they would be married in Nova Scotia. And right away they started blowing money fast. Now, as y'all can imagine, this is not Melissa's money that they blowing. This is Robert's money. They spent five months traveling and spent approximately $250,000 before they returned to Florida to settle down. Now, shortly after they got back from Florida, Robert started having medical issues. His health started declining. He had started getting dizzy spells. He had started slurring his words. He started falling quite frequently and he would have to be hospitalized multiple times. And Robert was pretty close with his kids and they just knew that even though their dad was up in age, this just was not typical of him. And so they started they started feeling like their dad was potentially being drugged and they called the elderly abuse hotline and pretty much asked like what should they do? Like what can they do? And so the the hotline told them that they should hire a 24-hour nurse or home care aide so that they can make sure that their father is being treated properly. And when Melissa was made aware of this, she was she was hot. She was pissed. She wasn't going for it. She threatened to sue the elderly abuse agency and she called one of Robert's son and left a super nasty message. Now she sounded real nice in the message, but her words was real nasty. She pretty much said that her and Robert was about to meet with a lawyer and that Robert was going to be changing his will and he was going to leave all the money to Melissa now, except for the portion that was set aside for his kids. The money that his kids was going to get was now going to be going to the Christian retreat. So they would be left with a big fat zero. And I think she tried to stick it to him when she said, now try that on for size. And Robert would end up passing away a little bit over a year into their marriage. And of course, Melissa had him cremated without an autopsy. And after Robert's death, Melissa cashed out and dipped out. She spent a little bit of time in Florida selling the house and getting stuff together. But by 2004, she was back in Prince Edward Island looking for her next husband. So she out in PEI chilling and cruising the online streets when in 2005 she come across a man named Alex Strategus. He was an older man in his 70s who was divorced and lived in Pinellas Park, Florida. And so naturally back to Florida, Melissa went. So she meets up with Alex, she puts her charm on and you guessed it, they ended up married. Now I don't think this was a legal marriage. I like her first illegal marriage though. Like not that she married him while she was married to somebody else, but like I don't think they actually went through the state but they claimed each other as husband and wife. And as per standard in Melissa's relationships, very shortly after they got together, Alex started having dizzy spells, falling, and he was hospitalized at least eight times within two 
months. So while Alex was pretty much out of it, like dazed and kind of confused, Melissa had him sign some paperwork, making her his power of attorney. But his son wasn't having none of that. And so he started doing his own little investigation. And somehow he got a hold of his dad's toxicology tests and found out that there was a bunch of benzoyl di there was a bunch of tranquilizers in his systems and this came in the form of benzodiazepines and this was something that his dad did not need so once he saw that he looked into his dad's bank account and realized that eighteen thousand dollars had been wiped clean of his bank account allegedly now luckily alex did survive but alex's son still ended up getting the police involved and unfortunately they wasn't able to prove that Melissa had poisoned Alex, but what they were able to charge her with was grand theft, forgery, and using forged documents. And to these charges, she pled guilty and was sentenced to five years in prison, but only ended up serving four. So on April 4th, 2009, Melissa was released from prison in Florida, and she was kicked out of the United States and deported back to Canada. And at this time, she was 74 years old. And you would think that you know life lessons you learn you live and you learn but no melissa did not she did not learn nothing and in 2012 when she was back in nova scotia she met a man named fred week who had lost his wife about a year prior to him meeting melissa so he was still grieving and going through that whole process of wanting companionship and dealing with the loss of his wife but once again melissa put on whatever charm she had left and very quickly after they met they were married. So they would spend their honeymoon in New Finland. And according to Melissa, on their way back, they both ended up getting sick on the ferry ride. And so instead of going home, they stopped at a bed and breakfast just to get some rest. Now the bed and breakfast host, she said that Fred looked like he had been sick and throwing up all night. But Melissa, she looked completely fine. But nonetheless, she said they were sick and they stayed in their room for pretty much the duration of the evening until the morning when it was time for breakfast. Fred was still just not feeling well at all. And so Melissa said that she wanted to get him to the hospital, but not before she finished her breakfast though. She needed to finish eating first because if he goes to the hospital, she's gonna be sitting down there all day. Not that hospitals don't have cafeterias, but whatever, sure, finish your breakfast, ma'am, before you send your dying husband to the hospital. Sure. So an ambulance was finally called and Fred was hospitalized and it was determined that Fred had hella tranquilizers in his system. Now Fred did survive this poisoning but an investigation was launched and I don't know the details surrounding the investigation but they was able to arrest Melissa's ass and initially she was brought up on charges of attempted murder but the charges was lowered to administering a noxious substance by poisoning and to these lesser charges she pled guilty and ended up serving three years in prison before she was paroled in 2016 and I cannot for the life of me understand why this woman keeps getting out of jail like bro she needs to stay in jail but anyways upon her parole upon her being paroled in 2016 she had a couple of stipulations and that was that she was no longer to date and she was no longer allowed to use the internet like can you imagine being paroled and they be like you cannot touch the internet but do y'all think she listened though tell me y'all think she listened so that i can tell y'all she did not because just a couple months later she was caught in a holofax library on some dating websites and obviously that was a violation of her parole and she was brought up on charges of violating her parole but the charges were later dropped and so as far as i know melissa is still a free woman to this day and I just don't understand how. I really don't get it. I don't understand why this woman is allowed to be free. Unless she died. Let me check. I don't know. I didn't see nothing that says she died. So uh, she probably still out here. I mean, she'd be 88 by now. But that don't mean she ain't out here still stealing and killing. Like, uh. But yeah, y'all. That's all I have for this case. Thank you so, so very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what y'all think the theme of this week is. And I will see you all in the next one. I'm trying to wait until, well, when, what? What? What was I saying? So Melissa was born Melissa Ann Russell on April. Nope, she wasn't even born in April. She was born in May. She said that she was going to flap her wings and, and fly the coop. Is that what they say? I don't even know. Instead of going straight home, they stopped at a... It's not an Airbnb. what they do? I don't know what they did. what they do? where they go?